All right, assignment three is combining assignments one and two together into its own scene. We call it a creature scape. And you'll see examples of it in Photo Bucket. And let's look at some um, past student examples. You'll see that there are two components that you are uploading for this assignment. One is what's called an overlay layer. And what you do with that is you simply uh, show us where you're placing your creature in the overall landscape and what additions you're making to it with dodging, with burning, with new compositing. And that helps, helps me see the, uh, the decisions you made about lighting and about atmosphere in combining your creature into a landscape. So we'll see that here. Here we see the dodging of a lot of extra light that overlaps the landscape and a lot of burning on the creature that overlaps the creature and the shadow underneath in order to set it into this scene in a believable way. Here we have the shadow and also a lot of lighting on the creature itself to help it match. And here we have just a simple shadow underneath and some highlight dodging to help it match. But then also there is some other stuff that had to be included because this is a reflective body of water. The student had to also add that reflection and notice how that reflection has to be blurred out a little bit and fade a little bit as it pulls away from the creature. So there's little things that we need to do to make this believable. And the way it works best is to have the most clean kind of cut out of your creature as possible to begin. And then to be able to put that into a layered landscape so that certain things can be in front of and behind uh, your creature and you can make use of texture fills and things to make it sink in. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is revisit old assignments. We go back to assignment one and instead of opening up our PSD, we are going to make a duplicate of it. And there's a few ways to do that. My favorite is to just hold down option on your keyboard and drag it out of your folder onto your desktop. And that makes a perfect duplicate of it. And then the other project we need is assignment two, but this time we don't want the PSD file, we want the PNG file, the, the cutout transparent file that you were asked to submit into photo bucket. And if, if I just quickly open that in preview, you'll remember that that PNG has, doesn't have a white background, doesn't have any background behind it at all. So I'm going to also duplicate that. So to see that in preview, you'll see a, a light gray background behind it. And it also has treated edges, right? So this is something you should really look at for your, oh, I left a little something there and there, right? You try to clean it up as best you can because then when you bring it over into your landscape, you don't have more cleanup work to do. So the edges look pretty clean. Do we need absolute perfection? No, we do not. But I'm going to duplicate this over by holding Option, dragging it to the desktop. Okay, now I'm gonna bring those into an Assignment 3 folder. Maybe I'll just bring that Assignment 3 folder up. But before I do that, I wanna rename Assignment 1 because I don't want this to get confused with my pure landscape. I'm gonna rename it Assignment 3 and call it my creature scape which is a made up word. And keep it as a PSD. So now I can put them all in my folder, leave this one out, because I always like to save to the desktop. Close this, go ahead and open up your assignment one, your multi-layered file, and get ready to drag into it, just like you're compositing with a new layer you found, a new, um, element you found. We're going to composite into it that PNG creature. Now it matters what layer you're on when you drag something in. So I want to be on the very top layer. And in this case, the very top layer is a combined layer that I just did some color correcting on that's only at 54%. So if I drag it on, it will come in on top of that layer. And I'm just going to hit return for now. Remember that when you just drag and drop something on, it's a smart layer. 
So it's going to come in to size, but if you resize it bigger or smaller, as long as it's a smart layer, it will retain as much of its original pixel dimension as possible. So you won't be hurting it at all. Now, what I can do just immediately before I start pretending to know where this creature should go, I can start with a command left bracket, moving it down through the layers. Now, immediately as I move it down through that first layer, which is just a color correcting layer, I lose a lot of my creature. So I'm just going to turn off that top layer and then keep moving it down. So ne the next layer it moves down is my texture overlay layer, which helps with some of the coloring and it gives the dappled like sunlight look. And that actually helps my creature's colors to match the underwater scene. The next is a texture overlay layer and that helps with some of the, the filtered lighting. The next is another texture overlay layer and that pushes that even further. The next we start getting into the actual um, foreground, middle ground, background layer elements of the first assignment. So now it's behind the coral, now it's behind the barrels, now it's behind more coral, now it's behind an additional background texture overlay, now it's behind more coral, now it's even deeper behind until eventually it's behind like these little block things and then eventually it's just behind everything. So you get to decide, is your creature in the far background? And if it is, like this, then how does it make sense in terms of its scale, right? So if my creature were the size of Godzilla, you know, it might look like this in the scene. And I want it to look at least, um, to take up at least 20 to 25% of the whole composition. But I'm also allowed to crop the composition should I want to. Now, if I did want it kind of kaiju size like this, maybe I would tilt it a little bit, have more of the head showing. And I might decide to have it interact with this block. Maybe its tusks are going through it or something like it's about to pick it up. So that's one option. Another option is to move it forward still, have it kind of float in the middle ground, which I think works pretty well. I like that the tusks are now up. And I see a little bit of the foot there. If I can move it a little further still. I can move it further still in front of these barrels. And it's kind of hidden there or behind the barrels. But I'm not trying to hide my creature. So I think I actually like to so play with your size of it, play with your placement of it. You're not trying to hide the creature, you're trying to take up um, at least 20 to 25%. And I actually like it right there. I kind of like that it's a sea creature, it's like a sea cow, but it's rooting through the coral, kind of like a pig looking for truffles. Right? And that its tusks might be able to interact a little bit with, with this coral reef that there's things in front of it and behind it yeah it's interesting now if i look close i can see that this coral here that's in front of it what i call the big coral layer is maybe a little bit softer in focus than my creature so now that i know my placement i can decide okay what elements further have to change and the one thing i'm going to do is i'm going to sharpen the focus a little bit on this coral which is not something we often do. So I'll show you the safe way to do it. You go to filter and you go to sharpen and you go to smart sharpen. And you click on a piece of the coral to sample, right? And then you set your settings and it will preview it for you. And look, that looks like about enough with these settings. So I say, okay. And now it's just going to take that soft kind of furry coral and make it a little bit sharper and in focus to push it a little bit more into the foreground like the barrels and like this foreground coral. And that will help my creature um, kind of fit into the depth of the scene. There we go. That helps. So we can always toggle it with Command-Z. 
Now, is the computer good at making up information? No, it's not at all. All it's good at is all it does when it sharpens is it finds pixels that are more than 50% different than each other. It determines that that's an edge and it increases the contrast at that edge. All right. Then other things, what about the color of my creature? Well, the beauty of texture overlays and lighting is it's pretty much doing all that work for me, but it doesn't mean I have to keep it. So we're going to adjust lighting next and we're gonna adjust it on the setting itself. Now, if this was in bright sunlight, it would make a lot of sense that there'd be some sort of light source in the sky and there'd be a shadow underneath my creature. And one thing I know for sure is that the foot of my creature is not gonna be so bright. So we're gonna do this in a non-destructive way. Instead of burning actual elements in our landscape and burning on top of our creature right away, we're going to create that gray overlay layer that we're, we submit. And to do that, we're gonna find our creature layer, which at this point is still um, a smart layer. I'm gonna mark it red, just so I can see it really clearly. And then behind that, I'm gonna make a new blank layer that I'm gonna mark gray, and I'm going to label it overlay layer. And I might call this my background overlay. So this is behind my creature, not on top of my creature. Now the background overlay layer is just empty right now. I want to fill it, so I go to edit fill, just like if we were gonna make it blank white or solid black, and I wanna fill it with 50% gray, normal mode, 100% opacity. And you see it only affects behind my creature. Now I'm going to set that normal <laughs> to overlay. And then it's like it's never there at all. But what I do is I can then dodge and burn on that layer, and it will dodge and burn everything underneath that layer. It's called non-destructive editing. So I'm going to use the burn tool. Well, first of all, I can even just um, adjust it directly. I can go to image adjustments levels, and I can make that gray a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. And it will just affect every layer behind my creature. I think I might make it a little bit darker so the highlights of my creature stand out a little bit. Okay, next, I can burn and I can dodge. So if I burn, I wanna use, I always, for dodge and burn and sponge tools, I wanna use a soft brush, big size, starting with the mid-tones at a, an exposure less than 30, I'll usually do about half of that. And then I can deepen some of these shadows behind the creature. Kind of set all that back. And that helps. Okay, next, I can do dodge effects. So if I want my creature to feel like it's disturbing the water a little bit, I'm gonna use the same settings, soft brush, but I might wanna lighten little, little areas around it. Remember, this is just on the background. This isn't affecting my creature, it's the stuff underneath my creature. And you see it builds up a lot of tools, so the history really matters. And we tend to overdo it. So it's nice to have it on a separate overlay layer. Okay, so what did it look like before I did any of that? Looked like this, oh, before I even did the levels. Looked like that versus this. So that helps set off my creature a lot more. So I like those decisions. I'm going to keep them. That's the background overlay layer. In the next demo, I'll do an overlay layer that's on top of my creature. And that allows me to dodge and burn on my creature without actually hurting the creature itself. But there's a limit to what you can do on an overlay layer. You can darken and you can lighten with dodge and burn but you can't change the color, right? In order to do that, you need to rasterize the smart layer of your creature and then edit it directly. And you can always do that with a duplicate if you like. So I might also wanna do um, an overlay layer on some of the foreground. So for that creature overlay layer, I'll also make it work for some of these barrels and things so that they're not such a distracting focal point so the eye gets to the creature a little bit faster. All right, 
it's a good time to save the work. And we'll pick it up there.